take it up to another level. His Eminence, the Bishop Charles Edward Blake. Let's hear it. Father, thank you all for your goodness and for your grace. Thank you for your mercy extended. Thank you for this powerful service that we may go. Your presence is in the room. You're here to heal, you're here to deliver, you're here to bless. Let your anointing fall on us tonight, dear Lord. Lift up your hands and say, Lord, I need a blessing tonight. Lord, you know exactly what blessing they need. I pray, dear Lord, that you'll move in this house. Bless the Lord that you've given me to share. As I release it, dear Lord, let your power and your anointing be upon it. Lives be changed and bodies be healed. Bound people be delivered in Jesus' name. Thank God. Clap your hands, everybody, and praise God for the answer. Please be seated in the house of the Lord. Thank you so much, Bishop Brooks, for that, as usual, excellent, uh, very respectful introduction. We've got the best first assistant to God and Bishop on the face of the earth. Give him a hand. Second assistant, Bishop Jerry Macklin. To all the general board members, Bishop Dutton, Bishop Thomas, Bishop Paul, Bishop Daniel, Bishop Shear, Bishop Porter, let's clap our hands and praise God for this great, wonderful general board. Chairman Eden, host uh, conductor of this wonderful convention. We are having some good church up in here. <laughs> And we're having a blessed time of fellowship and preparation for service to the glory of our almighty God. When saints come together, they just have a good time. The power of the Lord is present. We had our good dear friends, our Baptist friends from the church formerly pastor, pastored by our dear friend uh, Clay Evans, and now pastored by Reverend Charles Jenkins. Let's give them the rousing of love. Appreciate them so much. Come over so late at night and then to pour out of his energy and strength as he did causes me to understand that y'all have reached wonderful levels of interdenominational fellowship and joining hands with other Christian brothers and serving the Lord and worshiping together. Let's praise God for that. Post Pastor Bishop Cody Marshall. Clap your hands for him, please. All the bishops of the great Midwest. I'm in the great Midwest tonight. Is anybody proud of the great Midwest? Just so happy to gather together. I enjoyed my son tonight, Uncle Lawrence Blake. That's my miracle son. He went to school in Atlanta. One Saturday evening, Lady May and I got the message that my son had been shot. Discovered that he was shot center chest point blank. A 45 pistol. Came to the door. He had a friend of his to go out and have dinner. Young man was standing in the doorway when the door opened and shot my son. Lady May and I flew to Atlanta immediately. When we got there, we were so, so burdened and sorrowful because of the tubes and almost every opening of his body. His intensive care. The doctor did not know whether he was going to survive the night. But by God's grace, he did survive the night. <laughs> Oh. 
after being shot point blank with a 45 pistol. He's in the hospital Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. He walked out of the hospital. <laughs> By the power of God. The bullet entered his chest, in his chest. But somehow the bullet was diverted and it went down into his love. Rather than going into his heart. And I'm glad my son's alive. God is a miracle worker. Anybody believe in God for a miracle tonight? Look at your neighbor and say, this is your night for a miracle. Tell somebody on the other side, this is my night for a miracle. Thank God for it. Thank God for it. Thank God for it. Thank you for the miracle. We had all the other leaders and constituents of the church. Would to God I could call you all by name. But I could not respect you more or love you more, even if I did. I want to talk tonight about the Caleb report. Would you say those words after me, please? The Caleb report. Numbers 13 and 30. Then Caleb quieted the people before Moses and said, let us go up at once and take possession. For we are well able to overcome it. But the men who had gone up with him said, we are not able to go up against the people, for they are stronger than we. And they have, they had, and, and, and they gave the children of Israel, a bad report in the land which they had spied out, saying, The land through which we have gone as spies is a land that devours its inhabitants. And all the people whom we saw in it are men of great stature. There we saw the giants, descendants of Anak, came from the giants. And we were like grasshoppers in our own sight. And so were we in their sight. The Caleb report. Pardon my hesitation. The light is reflecting off these plastic sheets here that cause me to be unable to see so much. But most of you are familiar with the story of Moses. Moses was a man selected by God to lead the Israelites out of Egyptian slavery. Moses was born during a very intense period of oppression for his people. The Egyptian pharaoh had decreed that all the Jewish male children were to be killed as soon as they were born. But Moses' mother, to protect him from those who would have killed him, hid him among the reeds on the edge of the Nile River. Pharaoh's daughter came by one day heard Moses cry, had compassion on him, and adopted him as her own son. And then she retained Moses' mother, his birth mother, to be his nurse and care for him. When God selects you, God performs all kind of miracles to perform his purpose in your life. Look over toward your neighbor and say, hey neighbor, when God selects you, he performs all kind of miracles to accomplish his purpose in your life. Anybody out there who's had a miracle, come on, give him praise. Thank him for it. Moses spent 40 years in the Egyptian palace, gaining all the wisdom of the Egyptians. Then this 40-year period came to a close. Moses, in an attempt to protect one of his Jewish brothers, killed an Egyptian. And to escape punishment, Moses 
fled from Egypt, traveled south on the African continent to the vicinity of what is now known as Ethiopia and the Sudan. There he stopped by a well where a young lady and her sisters were trying to obtain water for their sheep. The other shepherds were about to drive them away, but Moses intervened forcefully and physically and defended the young ladies and drew water for their sheep. When they told their father Jethro what had happened, Moses was invited to their home for a meal. Jethro was so impressed by his time with Moses that he invited Moses to live with his family and work for them. After a while, one of Jethro's daughters, Zipporah, became Moses' wife. Numbers 12 and 2 informs us that Moses' wife, Zipporah, was an Ethiopian. She was an African, which means that their father, Jethro, and her brother, Hobab, and the rest of their family were also African, Ethiopian. But when Moses joined with Jethro, it's amusing that though they were Ethiopian, he did not go as a leader or even as a teacher, but he joined them as a son and a servant and a follower. At the end of 40 years with Jethro and his family, Moses' assignment was still to care for the sheep. This is what Moses found his wife doing 40 years before. And after 40 years with Jethro, he was working for Jethro, taking care of the sheep in the field. Moses was still doing that, but he saw a burning bush and received the commandment of God to deliver the Jews. Moses was insecure, not at all convinced of his leadership skill. His first leadership effort with the Jews had been a dismal failure, and it resulted in his exile from Egypt. But when God confronted Moses and put before him the challenge, Moses said, Master, please, I don't talk well. I've never been good with words neither before nor after you've spoken to me. I stutter and I stammer. Oh, Master, please send somebody else. Man, Moses was quietly humble. More than anyone, the Bible says, living on the face of the earth. Exodus 4.18, to show you how subject Moses was to his father-in-law, Moses went and returned to Jethro, his father-in-law, and said to him, let me go and return to my brethren who are in Egypt and see whether they are still alive. And Jethro said to Moses, go in peace. Jethro's family, Jethro's tribe also, seemed to have had a tremendous amount of military and organizational knowledge, had a vast knowledge of the wilderness and a tremendous reservoir of wilderness survival skill. As much as Moses had learned, he still found that from time to time he needed their help. And they became tremendous resources to Moses once he began to lead the people of Israel. Jethro literally saved Moses' life for the load of leadership was about to kill Moses, about to kill the people of Moses. He observed Moses talking to people all day long, sun up to sunset, listening to their problems and resolving their disputes. Gave Moses an elaborate lesson in management and delegation, which provided Moses the management tools that he needed to function as leader of the hundreds of thousands, if not millions of people that comprise the host of Israel. And when the Ethiopian Hobab Moses' brother-in-law, according to the International Standard Bible Encyclopedia, the service that Hobab rendered as leader of the host of Israel was most valuable and dutiful. Hobab was an experienced sheik of the desert. His counsel and companionship with Moses desired in the unfamiliar regions through which he was to journey. His knowledge of the wilderness and of the possible dangers would enable Hobab to be the Israelite to the Israelites instead of eyes. Numbers 10 and 29 says, Now Moses said to Hobab, 
the son of Ruel, the Midianite, Moses' father-in-law. We are setting out for the place of which the Lord said, I will give it to you. Come with us, and we will treat you well. And though we cannot be sure, it seems that Hobab did assist Moses and join with the children of Israel during their sojourn through the wilderness. Joy, God honored those blacks who were associated with Israel, and he defended and he protected them. Moses' wife, Zipporah, specifically identified as an Ethiopian, received the favor of Almighty God. Let me tell you how much favor she received. Aaron and Miriam, Moses' sister and brother, spoke against Moses because of the Ethiopian woman whom Moses had married. God struck Miriam with leprosy, drove them out of the tabernacle of meeting. Aaron had to intercede and pray and ask God to lift the penalty. And Lord, don't lay this sin upon us in which we've done foolishly and in which we have sinned. And it was only after seven days that the Lord lifted the leprosy from Miriam. Look at his name and say, don't mess with black women. Now let me say a few words about Caleb. The word Kenite, everybody say that, Kenite, is used only five times in Scripture. Once in reference to Jethro. Once in reference to Hobab and three times in reference to a man named Eber. All of these people were Ethiopian. The word Kenizzite is also used interchangeably with the word Kenite. And the word Kenizzite is used only three times at all, and all of them are in reference to Caleb's father. I said the word Kenizzite is used three times in reference to Caleb's father. Eight times the word is used regarding at least four people, some of whom were black. All but one was definitely black. And if Caleb would not is not black, or if Caleb was not black, he would be the only one of the four who was not black. The likelihood is that since Caleb was called what they were called, he shared the same ethnic characteristics that they shared. Judges one sixteen. Now the children of the Kenite, Moses' father-in-law, went up from the city of Palms with the children of Judah. Judges 4 and 11. Now Heber, the Kenite, of the children of Hobab, the father-in-law of Moses. And then in Numbers 32, 12, except Caleb, the son of Jephunneh, the Kenizzite. So what I'm trying to say, that as near as I can tell, Caleb was also Ethiopian or African. I don't know what your biblical scholars will tell you, but this famous biblical character who made such a great testimony to the glory of Almighty God was very probably an African brother. He and the rest of the Kenizzites were not born of Jewish parents, but they chose to associate and be a part of Israel. And because of that choice, they were blessed. And now I am proud to announce that several Ethiopian churches in Israel have recently joined the Church of God in Christ. Eight of them, according to our last count, the church is growing and spreading literally all over the world. Christianity is not restricted to any particular ethnicity. Black people are found in the Bible from cover to cover. Folk like Simon of Cyrene happened to be in Jerusalem the weekend that Jesus was crucified. As Jesus bore the cross up Calvary's hill, it was too heavy for him to bear. And he fell under the weight of the cross. Jesus understands when our crosses get too heavy because his cross got too heavy. If your cross is too heavy, just know that Jesus will help you to bear it and help you to share it. Black hands and woolly hair were proud to perform a service 
that all the great and wise men of all the ages would have been proud to perform. That is to bear the cross of Jesus Christ. Then the Ethiopian eunuch, the secretary of the Ethiopian treasury, was on his way back home from being in Jerusalem. He was a Jewish proselyte. He was reading from that passage where he was wounded for our transgressions and bruised for our iniquities. And Philip came by and talked to him for a while. He said, here's some water. What hinders me from being baptized? Philip said, if you believe with all your heart, you may. And the Ethiopian eunuch said, I believe, and was baptized in water and went back to start the Ethiopian Coptic church that still exists until today. Black folk are in the Bible from cover to cover. Hallelujah. Black people can rejoice in the role that God has blessed us to play. Let's talk about Caleb for a while. Ten of the spies who were sent out by Moses brought back a bad report. But Caleb and Joshua brought back a good report. The ten spies who brought back a bad report were struck down by the plague and died in the wilderness. The people who believed their bad report also died in the wilderness. Not one of them over the age of 20 lived to enter the promised land. Only Joshua and only Caleb. A Caleb report will keep you alive. I said a Caleb report will keep you alive. Caleb and Joshua brought back a good report. So many bad things are being said. So many bad things are happening in our world today. And as we look at our black people, sometimes our hearts are filled with despair. Half of our young black men don't graduate from high school. Half of the jail population is made up of young black men when they only constitute about 10% of the, of the population of our nation. 50% of the jail population is young black men. Black on black murder is the leading cause of death among young black men. And as we look out and see the condition of our world and the condition of our people, it's easy to become depressed and have our hearts forlorn and heavy by what we experience. But we need a Caleb report. Even a possible endeavor becomes impossible without a Caleb report. If you can, but don't believe you can. You will not try, and you will fail. Church of God in Christ, we need to give black people and the world a Caleb report. I said we need to give black people and the world a Caleb report. A Caleb report will transform our concept of who we are and what we can do. A Caleb report carries with us into the realm where the impossible becomes the possible. Whatever is impossible, it can become possible through the power and the presence of Almighty God. All things are possible. Only believe. A Caleb report enables us to break the paralysis of immobility and lack of progress, we can break free from the things that hold us back. A Caleb report will transform our mentality regarding what we can do for our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. A Caleb report refuels our power, gives us dreams and visions to walk in the power of Almighty God. And without a Caleb report, God's purpose for us and God's purpose for the good work that we would do will be left undone. A Caleb report assures us of the help of God and of the involvement of Almighty God. This is my Bible. It is the Word of God. I am 
what it says I am. I can do what it says I can do. I've got what it says I've got. And my Bible says I'm able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The people were discouraged. Caleb stepped forth and said, we are well able. Said, we're well able to take the land. We are well able to overcome the enemy. The God that brought us out of the wilderness. The God that caused the Red Sea to step back. The God that caused us to walk out free by the power of Almighty God. He's able, when you tell your neighbor, he's able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all. They that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They'll mount up on wings just like eagles. They'll run and not be weary. They'll walk and they won't faint. Tell your neighbor, neighbor, you won't faint. You won't fall. And when everybody else died in the wilderness, Joshua and Caleb lived on when everybody else died because of the Caleb report. When they carried a new generation into Canaan, Caleb said to Joshua, Hallelujah, for 80 years I've lived on this earth. I serve God with all my might. Now we're about to go into the promised land. Joshua, I'm just as strong now as I was then for making war, for doing whatever I need to do. Joshua, give me a mountain. I need a mountain. Give me a mountain. If God be with me, I'll overcome it. I'll take it. Caleb, who gave his report, took over the mountain, the most fertile and fruitful area in all of Israel. Not only did he take it over, but he drove the giants and he provided for his family on that mountain. I hear Brother Caleb as he talked about it and said, I don't feel no waste time. I've come too far from where I started from. Nobody told me the road would be easy, but I don't believe he brought me this far to leave me. Grab your neighbor by the hand. Say, oh neighbor, oh neighbor, I don't believe, I don't believe he brought me this far to leave me. Hallelujah, hallelujah. I just came back tonight to ask somebody whose report do you believe? Somebody ought to say we shall believe the report of the Lord. His report says I am free. His report says I am healed. His report says victory. Whose report do you believe? Yes. Oh, yeah. Glory. Glory. We need a Caleb report. I've got power that you can't see. God is living inside me. I can fight any enemy for God and me. I am majority. The Caleb report says being confident of this very thing that he which has begun a good report, a good work in you shall perform it to the day of the Lord Jesus Christ. Look at your name and say, neighbor, God is not through with you yet. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Child of God, the Caleb report says, I give you authority. I give you authority to tread on serpents and on scorpions and over all the power of the enemy and nothing shall by any means harm you. We've got a Caleb report, but we've got something better than a Caleb report because Caleb did not know Jesus, but we know Jesus 
the Son of God that died on the cross and arose from the dead. And that Jesus, that Jesus says, I give you power, power, power to tread on serpents. I give you power to tread on scorpions. I give you power over all the power of the enemy. And nothing shall by any means harm you. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, you've got the power to tread on serpents and on scorpions. And over all the power of the enemy. And nothing Oh, nothing, nothing shall by any means harm you. Tell two people that won't hurt you. That won't hurt you. It won't hurt you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He was wounded. He was wounded by transgressions. He was bruised by iniquities. The test time for our peace was upon him. By his stripes, we are healed. Yes, yes, in the name of Jesus, we go in the power and in the might of Almighty God. Jesus got up from the grave, and if Jesus can get up, you can get up. I don't care what's holding you back. I don't care what's holding you down. Get up in the name of Jesus. You got the power. Yes. Oh, yeah. Hallelujah. 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 All things, all things work together for good. If you love the Lord, do you love him tonight? Do you love him tonight? Lift up your hand and say, Lord, I love you. If you love him, the Caleb report is it's working out. I said it's working out for your good. Tell two people it's working out. It's working out. It's working out for my good. Tell somebody else it's working out for my good. Yes. Yes. Yes, the theme, the theme of the Church of God in Christ for this entire year is fighting for salvation and righteousness in a wicked and violent world. Does anybody know that we're living in a wicked world and a violent world? Violence is everywhere, but we've got to fight and make up our mind. Satan, you can have my joy. Satan, you can have my peace. Satan, you can have my family. As a child of God, let's tell it everywhere we go. Even as Caleb stood up and said we can do it, we are overcomers. We've got the power of God. Tell your neighbor, neighbor, we can do it. Tell your neighbor, we are overcomers. Tell him, neighbor, we've got the power of Almighty God. Come on and praise him. Praise him. Praise him. You know the Bacosa. Chocoa Hasa. Turn road your right. Turn road your right, everybody. Turn right. Turn right. Turn right. Turn right. Take one step. Take one step. Take another step. Take one more step. Now turn toward your neighbor and say, neighbor, I just woke out of my past, into my future, out of my trouble, into my miracle. Come on and praise him. Yes. Hallelujah. 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 Let me tell you what the Lord said to me. This is why I focus so much on what God did through Caleb, who was a black man. I believe he was a black man. Based on everything I understand about scripture, that black people, the black race, is going to be the key 
to the life and future of these United States in which we live. I believe that God used Caleb to deliver a word to Israel. God is going to use the church of God in Christ to deliver a word to these United States in which we live. I believe things are going to turn around. I said, I believe things are going to turn around. But look at the presidential candidates. And there's nothing for us to look at. One believes in abortion and gay marriage. The other doesn't say anything about poor folk. Trying to lift up themselves high and above and get away from us and oppress us even the more. But when you tell two people, God's going to turn it around. Turn it around, Lord. Turn it around, Lord. Turn it around, Lord. Turn it around, Lord. Yes. Yes. If you believe God, go turn it around, turn around twice, turn around twice, turn around twice. Now tell somebody it's turning around for good. Turning around for good. The Caleb word is you can make it. The Caleb remark is that you're an overcomer. The Caleb report is that God's going to bring you out. God's going to bring you through. The Caleb report is enlarge the place of your tent. Switch out the curtains of your habitation. Lift in the cords. Sit in the stakes. But the Caleb report says you're going to break forth on the right and on the left and your seed will inherit nations. Tell your neighbor, neighbor, your seed will inherit nations and make desolate cities inhabited. Come on and praise him. Praise him. Praise him. Praise him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Tell your neighbor, neighbor, look your neighbor in the eye and say, neighbor, I see you in the future and you look much better than you look right now. Yes! Thank you, Lord. 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 Come on, tell God thanks. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Oh, thank you. God bless your children. Bless your dear people. You've laid your word before them. You've spoken the things that you said to our hearts. Now, God, I see your people going higher. I see them going higher to higher levels. I see the Lord, you blessing their churches. I see thousands of people coming into their churches. Listen, say these words after me. I see thousands coming into my church. I see my community turned around. I see hundreds of people giving their lives to Jesus Christ. I see bodies healed. I see doors open. I see God taking my ministry to an altogether different level. I see God blessing me as he has never blessed me before. Hallelujah. 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 Send it, Lord. Send it, Lord. Send it. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, you're blessed. In the name of Jesus, you're healed. In the name of Jesus, you're delivered. In Jesus' name, clap your hands and praise Him. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And so, dear Lord, we thank you for your word. Thank you for your healing power. Thank you for your strength and ability to deliver. Thank you for what you've done for your people, even on this night. Thank you for the report that everything is going to be all right. In the name of Jesus, thank God. Thank God. Thank God. I bless you in Jesus' name.